The next thing we'll want to do is choose our simulation type. Um, so after we've loaded our geometry, we can you know, choose the one we want, uh, click on create uh, simulation, and then that will load essentially like the type of simulation that we want, and then we'll have to set it up. So I'm just going to walk you through all the various types of simulations that uh, SimScale can do. Um, now SimScale is constantly adding new things, so actually you'll even see some things in beta that are here. So the basic categories for um, simulations in SimScale are what the, they call them either structural, so on the left hand side here, there's either structural or flow based simulations. So what that actually means is, so everything that's listed as structural is really a finite element analysis. And in particular, it's attached to their um, software that they're using called uh, Code Aster. Um, so everything that you do under the structural category, it goes under the category of uh, finite element. And then the flow-based simulations, there's a couple of different variations on this that don't quite fall into this category, but most of everything here is actually done using the finite volume method. Um, in particular, they're running a, a software package called OpenFoam, which is an open source finite volume package um, under the hood. Some exceptions to that include like the, there's an incompressible lattice Boltzmann method that's here. And then there's some variants of that, like including, so the immersed boundary method, which is basically for, um, tracking moving surface or sorry that's sorry this is not quite right um if we're multi-phase they're using the volume of fluid method to like do some tracking of phase fronts um along with that so uh you know conjugate heat transfer uh, okay so let's talk about the heat transfer aspects of this now so um i'm mostly interested in the heat transfer aspects so the finite element method is the primary method of doing uh, just like conduction heat transfer problems. So that includes linear heat transfer, steady state heat transfer problems, transient heat transfer problems, conduction heat transfer problems, and nonlinear um, conduction problems. So those are ones that include like temperature dependent material properties and radiation and things like that. Um, you can go a step beyond that. So finite element analysis obviously is also you can be used for doing um, displacement and stress analysis for mechanics. So um, there's a version of the heat transfer code called thermomechanical analysis in which it simultaneously is solving a heat transfer problem and a structural like a mechanical problem where um, so essentially what that allows is for you to include temperature dependent stresses and you know uh, like thermal expansion effects into um, into a structural analysis so that's sort of an advanced concept so if you think about the way that a thermomechanical simulation works basically it has to solve the heat transfer problem first and then applies that as sort of an initial or like an extra condition to a mechanical analysis. So um, that's pretty much how that works. Most of the rest of these are um, mechanical analysis. So like, you know, these are things like vibrational frequencies um, and, uh, you know, anything that has like, uh, like a sinusoidal response. I don't believe you can actually do the harmonic analysis on um, heat transfer though, unfortunately. Not yet. Um, so let's talk about some of these other ones that are up here, even though we're not gonna do them right now. So convective heat transfer, uh, convective heat transfer is really for simulating heat transfer in a fluid. So if you are only interested in how like heat travels um, through the fluid and you can like come up with a simple description of how it connects to the solid boundaries then convective convective heat transfer is the type of simulation that you want conjugate heat transfer refers to like when you want to solve for both the temperature distribution in a solid and the temperature distribution in a moving fluid at the same time so the conjugate problem means that you're solving for the solid and fluid conduction simultaneously. 
Um, in fact, actually, like SimScale does a pretty good job here. You can actually also handle radi thermal radiation um, to multiple surfaces using the conjugate heat transfer so uh, um, software. They've got a couple different variants of that. The one they call 2.0 is what I would call the regular um, conjugate heat transfer solver. And then they've got another one called the conjugate heat transfer IBM, um, which the, the IBM is the immersed boundary method. This is actually really just a way of um, essentially getting rid of undesirable details in your simulation. So like if you uh, load a circuit board, it may have lots of components and stuff that don't really affect things like you don't you're not interested on like that size scale of details. So like this, this is a solver that's built um, for dealing with that. Um, it's basically just the conjugate heat transfer solver, but with like some geometric simplifications. Um, from the heat transfer point of view, that's probably all you need to know. So the regular heat transfer one is just for conduction in the solid. You're, mod you're modeling boundary um, conditions on the solid's surface or like volumetric heating interior to that, but nothing is allowed to flow. You're not actually like tracking the fluid flow on the outside. The best you can do is to like apply a heat transfer coefficient on the outside that would represent what a fluid would be doing. Okay, so those are those are your choices. Um, for the, what we're trying to do, laser heating on a solid surface, I can model that using the finite element method. And then I'll just model the laser as being a boundary condition. So I'll create that simulation and then I will walk you through the interface.